Okay, let's look at some of these examples using acceleration. So example one says a bike says that a bicyclist accelerates at 0.75 meters per second squared. during a five second interval. So that means the time is five seconds. And it says, what is the bicyclist change in velocity? So this isn't solving for just V, but delta V, change in velocity. Our acceleration equation is A equals delta V over T, and we can do a magic triangle over here with A delta V over T. So if we're solving for delta V, we get A times T. Let's go back and double check the units because I forgot meters per second squared, those are the SI units for acceleration, and seconds. So we'll see that those are matching and will help cancel out to the correct units. So acceleration is 0.75 meters per second squared times 5 seconds. So this seconds cancels out one of those and we get 3.75 meters per second. This doesn't mean that our bicyclist was going 3.75 meters per second after those five seconds. It just means he was going that much faster because he had that much of a change in velocity. Let's look at example two. It says a freight train traveling with a speed of 18 meters per second begins to slow down as it approaches the train yard. The train's acceleration is negative 0.33 meters per second squared. What is the train's speed after 23 seconds? So the first thing we have is this speed. And since we're talking about acceleration, we know we're talking about how speed changes. So we need to know when is it going 18 meters per second. It's going 18 meters per second at the beginning. So the initial velocity equals 18 meters per second. And it begins to slow down. Acceleration is negative, which makes sense if we're slowing down. And what is the train speed after 23 seconds? And the question is asking for the final velocity. We have our acceleration equation up here, but we didn't do this one. Our change in velocity is equal to our final velocity minus our initial. So if we use our acceleration equation to solve for delta V again, then we can use our delta V and our initial to solve for our final. So remember, delta V equals A times T. So make sure we have the right measurements. And seconds cancels out that one. And you'll see that your change in velocity is negative, which is correct because it's slowing down. So negative 7.59 meters per second. It's very important that you keep the negative sign on there. It makes a difference. And we have this equation now. So our delta V, we can just plug straight into it. We don't have to rearrange until afterwards.
This one's a little trickier to rearrange because this is a minus sign, not a times sign. You cannot use magic triangle. So final minus the initial. So to get a V final by itself, you have to add 18 to both sides. It's the only way to get it to cancel out on this side. So you get the V final equals 10.41 meters per second. And we can do a reality check. It was moving 18 meters per second. It slowed down. So its final velocity is less than its initial velocity. Double check because if that's not the case, you did something incorrect with your negative sign. You dropped it, or maybe you multiplied instead of added. That's the most common error here. You have to remember this is a subtraction. Can't treat it like multiplication. Let's do a few more examples. So example three says, if a hammer dropped on Mars accelerates from rest to 15 meters per second in 4.04 seconds, what is the acceleration due to gravity on Mars? So from rest, and that's where it starts. So the initial equals zero meters per second, and the final was 15 meters per second. And we have 4.04 seconds. We want to know the acceleration. So we know that acceleration is change in velocity over time. So we have to take this and solve for change in velocity. And remember, this is always final minus initial. And you can see that our change in velocity is 15 because we have zero here. So we have acceleration, we have 15 meters per second, divided by. Those seconds don't cancel out because remember that this is like an s over a 1 and dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by its reciprocal so we have 1 over s so we just end up with two s's on the bottom and we get that the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is 3.71 meters per second squared And it makes sense. Our hammer is speeding up, going from 0 to 15, so the acceleration should be positive. Let's do one more example. If an ice skater starts at a speed of 13 meters per second and then slows down with an acceleration of negative 2.5 meters per second squared, how long does it take the ice skater to come to a stop? I even tell you that means that the V final is zero. So our V initial is 13 meters per second. Our V final is zero. And our acceleration is negative 2.5 meters per second squared. And we are solving for time. So we know a equals delta V over T. And if we want to draw a magic triangle so we can solve for time, time is delta V over A. So we need to solve for our delta V first. Final 
minus the initial. Zero minus 13 tells us that our delta V is negative, and that's important, 13 meters per second. You need to see that the velocity is decreasing, so make sure. So let's plug in to solve for time. Time equals delta V. divided by negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Remember, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. Meters cancels, and that seconds cancels out one of the top ones. And you'll also see that your negative signs cancel out, which is really important because there's no such thing as negative time. If you ever get a negative time answer, you know that somewhere you messed up. So please take a few minutes and do at least one of the practice problems below. If you need help, please ask me for it. This is about as complicated as this math is going to get.